Hey guys, Grady here. So today I'm just telling you guys a little bit about me. I love um, telling people about me and you know who I am, what I like to do, etc. So one of the things I really enjoy doing is going on walks, and I like you know I like being really creative and I like art. I like lots of forms of art. Um, I enjoy music a lot and I enjoy um, I really enjoy traveling traveling is like my is like the thing I love the most I love to travel visit new places learn about new cultures so like recently we just traveled up to Alaska as you guys all know and as you guys can see I'm wearing an Alaska hat but um uh, we traveled up to Alaska. We, um, we, um, have traveled to Australia before. We've been to England. We've been to Canada. Um, that's really it for international places, at least as family. Um, and, uh, I've been... To a lot of states in the United States and that's another thing too I live in the United States I have a lot of friends throughout the world whether they move from the United States or whether I've connected with them through family members that live in other countries or you know things like that um, I love animals I love reading books I do I love reading books a lot I love watching TV, doing exercise, gaming, um, hanging out with my family. I enjoy doing all those types of activities. I think that they're very good for the soul, very good for the soul and mind and body. I believe in peace. I love spreading peace and love wherever I go. No, that does not mean I'm a Christian. I'm not religious at all. That's just what I believe in. Um, I enjoy the cold, so I'm a huge cold weather freak, and right now it's actually, it's really hot here. It's miserable and unbearable, honestly. But I enjoy the cold weather. Um, I enjoy taking hikes, as you guys know from my previous videos. I, um, I really enjoy celebrating like at events or like, you know, parties or something. Not like holiday events or like, well, okay, I shouldn't say that. Not like, um, not like, um, the 4th of July or things like that. More like, um, I enjoy celebrating, you know, like Christmas or, um, Labor Day or uh, things like that, you know, St. Patrick's Day. Um, I enjoy celebrating Canada Day, which is July 1st. Um, I enjoy, I like to eat food, of course, but I think everybody at some point in their life likes to eat food. I like to talk to people. I'm not much of a people person, even though I love talking to other people. I love learning new things, but I'm not much of a people person, but that doesn't mean I don't care. I care very much about people. I'm a huge advocate for animal rights and for Native rights, not just Native American, Native wherever, Australian, European, African, Asian. Huge advocate for stuff like that. I am a huge fan of rocks. Like, I like collecting rocks. I don't know rock names all that well, but I just like collecting certain rocks. I haven't done avid collecting in years, but every now and then, when I'm outside somewhere, or when I'm on a walk, I'll just take a rock and I'll just take it home. And, you know, that's, that's what I do. Um, excuse me, sorry. I, um enjoy 
playing a lot with like my pets and with other people's pets and like playing games with friends whether it's board games video games card games pen and paper games all kinds of games I'm a really fun outgoing type of guy I love to be um, I love to be out in nature nature relaxes my mind and my body and my soul when I'm um, when I'm too agitated nature helps me relax and um, I really enjoy uh, oh I'm, I'm also gay I am gay um, so just letting you guys know that um, my family all knows my friends my co-workers they all know they're all they're all fine with it obviously um, but I am gay and I'm proud of it I couldn't be any happier of that fact I'm so happy of that fact that if I were any happier I would literally burst into a million tiny little pieces and that's really all that there is to know about me um, so now we move on to other topics and now I'm going to talk about why I love the cold weather as I mentioned to you guys I'm a cold weather person I'm a cold weather freak I am uh, so I love the cold weather the reason why I love the cold weather is because you know you can always go inside and warm up but when you're in the heat you can't always go inside and cool down like I can't for example I mean yeah I can leave my you know windows open doesn't do a darn thing still is really hot at night and it's you know it's like mid-September and it still gets really super duper hot at night when I'm trying to uh, you know sleep and such it still is really hot in my room even with my screened windows open it still gets really super hot and it's it drives me nuts and I'm just really looking forward to the cold weather I love the cold weather I um it's one of the reasons why I plan on moving up to northern Canada so I can live in the cold weather basically year-round um, and uh, I really enjoy playing in the snow throwing snowballs um, making snow cones um, like in the winter time uh, I enjoy curling up in front of the fire with a cup of hot chocolate as well I really like to look at the snow I like to take pictures of it I just love playing in the snow and you know it makes it all the better when it's cold because then it's more enjoyable I don't know what it is about the cold that really really gets to me it's just there's something there that makes me you know like really super duper excited I love absolutely love building snowmen I love building other snow sculptures not that I've really practiced it yet but that's my goal let me hang on switch here for a second so I can let Robert go to the bathroom if he needs to it sounds like he needs to um, I really enjoy playing with my dogs out in the snow my um, friends my family sometimes it's nice by myself and I enjoy sledding not a big skier or snowboarder um, but I love sledding I love to go sledding sledding is really fun for me I enjoy it um, I think it brings me calmness and relaxation I enjoy what other winter activities do I enjoy um, I enjoy I do enjoy sledding I like snowshoeing. Snowshoeing is pretty fun. Um, snowshoeing is really fun. It's um, I just like doing it. Keeps you above the snow, but at the same time, I also like going deep into the snow as well. Not like completely covering myself, but you know, like just doing standard stuff like that. It's really fun for me. It's. Um, 
it helps me relax, which I'm usually relaxed for the most part, but it's like really super duper fun. I just love the snow and I, we didn't really get snow last winter. We um, just got the heat and the sun and I'm, I really, I really don't want that this year. This year I want to have the snow and the ice and the freezing cold, like the below freezing and below zero temperatures. Um, that's what I want this year. Um, I know not everybody's like that, and that's okay. You know, if you're a hot weather person, I'm not going to judge you. I just am not a huge fan of the heat, especially when it's hot and dry, like where I live, because when it's hot and dry, that means a lack of water, and that means a lot more fires, and, I am not, and I'm not okay with that. I do not want that. I do not want more fires. I want as few fires as possible. I want more snow, but climate change has taken all of that away. That's all gets taken away when that all, all that bad stuff happens. That's the fault of climate change. Um, come on. Um, that's all the fault of climate change, human-induced climate change, that is. So it's basically all our fault. But um, at the same time, I don't like just, you know want the heat to go away forever. Heat is good for us, but so is the cold. They're both good for us, and they can both be really bad and dangerous for us, too. Being hot can really cause you to get super duper sunburned, like super duper badly. It happens all the time um, to people, especially when they don't put sunscreen on. In fact, I forgot to put sunscreen on. I'll have to remember to do that. Um, I have noticed in the past that, um, sunscreen, because I've done research on this and a lot of people have told me this, that sunscreen, um, if you don't wear it, it causes cancer and it's not as powerful, the sunscreen itself is not as powerful as people say it is, so no matter what SPF you use, you still need to apply it every half an hour at the very, very, very least. Every half an hour, that's what I always do. If I'm doing stuff outside for a long time on a hot day as I apply sunscreen every half an hour to my um, body, and I, it works out well for me. I haven't gotten sunburned in quite a while. Um, I, uh, have enjoyed the days of just being inside when it's too hot out, and I've enjoyed um, the days of being outside when it's really cold out. I've enjoyed the rainy days, which we haven't had many of. I have enjoyed the days where it's cloudy like today. As you can see, it's, it's pretty cloudy. Pretty cloudy indeed. Sun isn't out right now. But I mean, like, the sun is still, you know, the sun is still important. It is, it's important. We need the sun, we couldn't live without it, so. I don't hate the sun, I just hate all this heat. Um, it's driving me nuts. It's, um, my parents are always telling me that I need to get out more and exercise more. Well, I mean, I would do that if it weren't so hot all the time. I would, I would do that if it weren't so hot, but it is hot constantly and I just don't have a reason to get out and do stuff. So I do exercises inside, um, albeit I need to start um, going to a gym every day or at least every other day or, at, you know, at the very, very least once or twice a week. but. Still, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not like overweight, but I'm not like super duper in shape either. Um, but I enjoy walking. Walking helps me relax my mind, like I said, and I enjoy doing this for you guys. No, I don't have very many subscribers on this channel, but that doesn't bother me. I'm probably not going to get very many subscribers for a long time. You guys probably don't watch the whole my whole videos, but still, you guys watch part of them, which is good. Um, I might set it up to where I can make money 
off of my YouTube videos and then I can um, send that money into organizations like Greenpeace, you know, the organizations that are helping to save the world, whether it's starving children or the animals or the rainforests or the forests in general or just, you know, organizations like that. I know a lot of people who make money off of um, YouTube, but they donate it, they make it so they can donate it to good causes. That's my goal. I feel that that is a good goal of mine to have and one that I can enjoy um, because, you know, it's there's more to life than money and I'm not making this for greed, I'm making this so I can, you know, my work money, a lot of times, yeah, I'll take money out to use for myself, but it's so I can use it to buy my own food. I do still live with my parents, but they shouldn't have to buy my food all the time. That should not be their job. Um, so yeah, I'll use my work money from my store job to, you know, buy my own food. Um, I use it to buy other things for myself, like if I'm at a thrift shop, if I need a new shirt or something, I'll use it to buy a shirt or some new shoes or, you know, things like that, that type of stuff. Um, I have been enjoying, um, you know, giving to those in need, whether it's plant life or animal life or human life, I just what I enjoy doing um, makes me happy and I'm a very happy person overall I enjoy taking these walks for you guys look we're surrounded by a bunch of trees here this is down the next road over from my house um, and I you know I just I really enjoy doing this for you guys makes me happy I know it definitely makes a lot of people happy. Not everybody, but a lot of them. Um, people enjoy different things, and that's you know that's that's not that's not something bad. That's actually something really good. And now I'm gonna turn around because I've walked pretty far, and now I'm gonna go back home. Um, so I've been hanging out a lot at home on my days off, taking nature walks. I haven't really been going anywhere. I don't really have a car yet. I'm saving up to buy a car, but an environmentally friendly car. I don't want to buy a, um, a gas-powered car because that's, that's just too harmful and destructive on the environment. I don't like doing that. It's really, really sad that, you know, that a lot of people are still buying gas-powered cars. Gas may be reliable to get us places, but really, is it like reliable when it comes to saving planet Earth? The answer to that is no, it isn't. But, you know, it's just what happens. Like, I've come to accept that fact. I have, um, uh, I have, Come to accept a lot of things that I rather would not have but I know that they're just part of the world and that they just happen that way and I have also come to accept the fact that not everybody is the same which is obviously true not everyone is the same you know I don't judge other people I don't you know I'm I mean like I if you're religious regardless of what religion I don't judge you. I've got two best friends. They're they're Jewish. They don't celebrate Christmas at all, but they know that my family does, even though my family is not Christian. They know that we celebrate that, but we don't, you know, we don't hate each other. We still love each other, and we can be friends. You can be friends with somebody and not have to agree with them on stuff. You don't have to agree with everything your friends do or say. I definitely don't. 
for the human friends that I have. Most of my friends are animals, but that's fine by me. I, I don't want it any other way, honestly. But I don't agree with everything my friends, you know, my human friends believe in. It's not to say that they're wrong. If it's what they believe, it's what they believe. Unless it's something that is wrong by general rules of society, then yes, that is wrong. But like, you know, it's... It's like if, you know, they believe that, I don't know, shall we say that, um, you know, that trees are only good for making fire. Well, like, that's understandable because people use wood to make fire, but trees are also good for us as they provide us with the oxygen that flows in from the ocean and they provide us with other nutrients they give us the ability to breathe the air that we breathe. Um, that's why it's hard for people who live above tree line to live up there. It's not impossible. It's definitely not impossible. It's just hard for them. I know I'm not really looking at the camera, guys, but it's just such a pretty day out. And it's, I'm in a nice area and I'm, I'm really happy that I'm here and that I get to be, you know, walking. It's enjoyable and I'm hoping soon that my mom um, will start joining me on my walks. Um, or, you know, my dad or my sister or something. But they just never go with me. So I always take one of the dogs for a walk with me. Sometimes I take many of them. Sometimes I just take one. Usually when I take just one, I, uh, no, hey, put that down. No. Um, usually when I just take one is when I film, because when I take a lot of them and I film, you know, as well as my dogs listen to me, there can be other distractions and it's a lot harder to control that many dogs if there's a distraction then it while holding a camera and talking to you guys than it is to just control you know one or two so that's why I don't really go with any of my go with a lot of my dogs on these nature walks where I film for you guys because I just I love my dogs it's not that I don't care but first off they're very shy they're very camera shy they don't like things being in their face, really. Um, and they also were abused, a lot of them. So they don't like being filmed. I've tried it on them before. They don't like it. Most of them don't. A couple of them do. But that's really about it. Um, and uh, I just I want to respect their wishes, so I give them their space when it comes to stuff like that. I make sure that they're also very well fed every day. I don't always eat during the day when I'm at work, but I always make sure that, you know, my dogs eat, my cats eat, and that my alligator eats. Um, I make sure all my pets eat before, you know, before I do. And I enjoy, you know, well, if they've already had, like, they're only supposed to eat twice a day, most of them. So if they've already had their um, fill for the period that it's in, like if it's afternoon, I'll make a sandwich and then I won't. Then afterwards, I'll feed them later that night at around like 5 p.m. or so. Um, but what I enjoy doing with them is taking them out to play in the yard with them or um, training them. I enjoy, I enjoy training. I do. I enjoy training dogs and other animals. I haven't had too much experience with other animals other than dogs, but still, I enjoy it. I would rather, um, I would rather have them be trained than have them not be trained. And that's the most important thing for a dog, is training. 
you know, I work with them every day. No, I don't train Robert. That's my sister's job because he's her dog, but I train them, the other dogs, every day. I work with them a little bit, except for Julie. Of course, Julie's much too old and it hurts her joints and all that. Um, she's got a vet's appointment today. She was licking herself repeatedly over and over last night and some tufts of fur came off to reveal a skin spot but it doesn't look like it's bleeding or anything and it didn't it wasn't bleeding last night so I think that she's good for now and um, you know she'll I know she'll be fine um, and I know that um, she still has time left with us even though she is 13 um, and She's a tough dog. She's a really tough dog. She has um, been with us since she was a puppy, of course. But um, Robert is only like a little over a year old, so he's still a young, he's a young one. But I love training dogs. I think training them is most important. Exercise is also important for a dog, yes, but training is even more important. Dogs need to be trained and they need to work at the same training you give them every day of their lives, basically. So, you know, they need to learn. And I don't train dogs using food. Um, I never really have liked that idea. Um, but I'm, I'm not like, you know, if I had another dog, like a newer one, that wasn't abused and that wasn't, you know, like so, shy around people or in public, then yeah, I would make a video, you know, training her or him. And I, I might do that, but on this channel, no dog training on my other channel. Yeah, you'll see dog training, but it'll be in like video games and that kind of thing. And it's really, it's really a good thing to do for your dog. Dogs want to learn. You have to make your dog compliant. No, you don't hit your dog ever, not even while training them. You don't even tap them or anything. You just tell them no, and if no is broken, you put them in their little crate or kennel. Or if it's a big dog, their big crate or kennel. You don't hit them though. That's not how you go about training a dog or any animal. I've thought about, you know, running a circus in the future and I you know I plan on showing the people you know that we let the animals there I'd let the animals make mistakes I'd if they made mistakes I'd show them you know it's okay you can always make mistakes nobody and nothing is perfect okay nobody nobody perfect by definition means one who does not ever make mistakes, who does everything right all the time. Well, there's nobody like that. There isn't. We all make mistakes. We all say the wrong thing at the wrong time sometimes. And we, um, we, you know, that's just how we are. Not just us, animals too. You notice, like in nature a lot, when animals are hunting, oh yeah, they make mistakes. Haven't you noticed like how, especially with like big cats and all that, how their success rates are not very high? That's not only because they make mistakes, that also has to do with the fact that they can only maintain their top speed for a few seconds, whereas their prey can endure for much longer. And you know, they're not, they didn't evolve to be perfect. So no, they're not perfect predators. They're pretty darn good. Here's more nature, guys. We're on the road. Look at that, valleys over there and mountains. Um, that's just how they've evolved to be. They're not, you know, they're not necess That doesn't mean that they're bad or that they're losers. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that at all. What it means is that they, do the very best that they can to survive, and sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't. 
you know, it's like with humans. Humans over time have become weaker and weaker. We don't rely on natural resources anymore, but instead we make all these products that cause greater harm to the planet than using natural resources does. And, you know, it's, it's really, really weird. And, you know, and it's like humans are a lot weaker now than they were 1,000 years ago even. 1,000 years ago, humans were, you know, they didn't really live in homes, or maybe they did, but they were all off the grid type homes, and that's the type of home that I want to live in. I shouldn't have to use electricity to light my way around. If I need to do that, I can get a lantern that you put fuel into, and that lights it up that way. That's what I can do if I want to find my way around in the dark. We can all do better. I'm not saying everybody has to do this. I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, it's really crucial that we learn, you know, from what has happened in the past, good and bad. We learn from both the good and the bad side, and that we realize that, you know, maybe we need to change back to some of the old ways because maybe some of the old ways were better than they are in this day and age in this modern time setting there are positives and negatives to everything including the internet one of the good things about the internet is that now you can get news from around the world in literally less than 30 seconds um you can, you know, back like in, even in the very early 90s and the 80s and before that, that, that could not happen. You would have to send letters and it would take weeks if not months to get to their final destination. And so that's one good thing about the internet. One bad thing though is that there's a lot of crime on the internet and you know, I mean, I think the internet is good, but at the same time, it's also not very good. So I believe everybody should be allowed to use it, but everybody needs to be careful. They need to know about um, safety online or just safety in general when they're out in public as well. Um, you know, and a lot of things have changed too, like schools have security now, which that's a good thing, because they didn't used to, but then again, school shootings never used to really happen, you know, and mass shootings didn't really used to happen either until people revoked gun control from certain countries like the United States, and then mass shootings happened all the time, and you know, and people are trying to ask how to stop these mass shootings, and you know, the answer is simple. You need to have gun control. Gun control means safety. Lack of gun control means lack of safety or no safety at all. So, you know, I don't want my kids growing up in a country without gun control. I don't. I don't want my kids to suffer for, through something dangerous like that. That's really, really horrible that people do that. And the worst part is, is that when people do do that, when they do kill kids, you know, by using a gun, the people who use the gun do not get in trouble because the NRA and the US Constitution, all they care about are their guns. They don't care about the kids at all. It's true, they don't. And you know, this is, you know, no, I don't own a gun because I don't have a need for one. There are other ways you can defend yourself if you are being attacked. A lot of people take martial arts classes. Me, I would do that, but what I like doing is I like, um, I like just fighting to the best of my ability, but I don't even like fighting in general. In general, fighting is violent, and we don't want violence in this world. You know, you guys say, oh yeah, you know, the military's find peace with other countries. Well, no they don't, because then the countries they find peace with team up with them to bomb other countries, especially the United States. You know, the United States bombs just about 
you know, everywhere in the world. This is not how we solve problems. Violence is not going to solve anything. You need to be peaceful all the time, 24-7. You need to realize that bombing will never work on anything. We can't bomb, we can't bomb government buildings. That will not solve anything. 9-11 was bad, that didn't solve anything. Um, you know, and the president the United States had at that time, he didn't really do much to help with that. He did some things, I'll give him credit on that. Like he kept us really safe after that, but other than that, he didn't really do much, you know, to help stop that kind of thing in the future. He, he just didn't. And guys, I'm going to end this video here. Um, but anyways, I hope you all have a very peaceful day. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye now.